Kirby Smart has eliminated the one program he couldn't beat. That was Paul Feinbaum the other day on his show uh, talking about Georgia and the trans you know, transition uh, from uh, Nick Saban now to uh, Kalen DeBoer, the new head coach at Alabama. I mean, listen, there's no question. You can't argue. It's one in five. But I do think it's just kind of like, hey, you know, um, it's a very disingenuous way to talk about things. But then again, you know, it's not wrong. But it, it, I think it takes away from uh, that, that statement. It takes away from uh, what Kirby and Georgia has accomplished over this last, you know, seven years or whatever it is. Everybody is going to praise Nick Saban. His, his career is done, and, you know, that's just what it is. Kirby's still got a ways to go. And, and to be honest with you, um, you know, I would be floored if Georgia doesn't win another national championship with Kirby Smart as his head coach. I don't think, I don't think the amount of national championships that Nick won at Alabama is out of the question for Kirby at Georgia, to be honest. I mean, I just think that, um, you know, when you talk to folks around the league, Georgia people are a little less likely to do this just because they're always frazzled. But um, there's, there's no question that the removal of Nick Saban, Alabama, is going to help Georgia, whether it was Mark Richt or Jim Donnan as the head coach. Um, of course, Mark dealt with peak Alabama, I would say. Jim Donnan, I don't think Jim Donnan ever played Alabama. Um, but anyway, uh, he'd have won those games probably because Alabama was just not good at that point. If that's where we go back to with Alabama, then obviously Georgia will – it will be someone very much different in their way. But I don't think that's what's going to happen to them. I think what will happen is they will be much more like what happened at LSU or maybe what's happened at Clemson where, you know, you can – the drop-off is obvious. But, yet they may, may still have, you know, good times or good moments. I mean, LSU has – Maybe with the exception of 2020, they've never been bad, but they've not been great with the exception of 19. I mean, even at 18, um, that was a really good LSU team. They were borderline great, but they weren't great like 19. I mean, 19 was a different universe of good for LSU. So, I just think that, you know, a lot of times what happens with Paul is... Uh, it just comes flying right out. He doesn't, you know, that was at the start of one of his shows. Um, but I, I don't at all think that, um, you know, Nick leaving should mean anything less for Kirby's legacy necessarily. I mean, the first national championship Kirby got was against Nick Saban. The second one, you know, Alabama wasn't there. Um, Alabama didn't win the national championship this past year, and there's there's no, you know, prerequisite that you have to beat Alabama to win the national championship, and we've seen that a lot. You, it, it's been common, but that's not been the case the whole time. So, you know, in 22, Georgia didn't play Alabama, and they were, you know, one of the best teams in college football history. So uh, it doesn't take away what they accomplished in 22. But there's, you know, there's no doubt that, the departure of Nick from Alabama, that matters a lot. Um, it matters a lot because that will hurt Alabama in big time. It's helped Ohio State, seemingly. It's helped Ohio State when you see, you know, a five-star quarterback just to tra immediately transfer from Alabama. When you see Caleb Downs leave from, uh, you know, Alabama and go there. Uh, this is not Alabama, but... Uh, Junkins going from Ole Miss to Ohio State. I mean, this is a great opportunity for Ohio State. We just we don't we don't know if they'll cash in on it. You know, um, I'm not. I don't mean that bad. We don't know. We don't know. It could be that you know Michigan repeats as national champions or something like that. I, I don't think anybody sees that coming. But it's just one of these things where um, you know I think. Kirby's never going to be able to remove that he went one and five against Nick Saban. But I don't, you know, uh, what's the best way to put this? Um, you know, I, 
you know, Kobe didn't really deal with Michael Jordan in a direct way. That didn't take away Kobe Bryant's legacy, how amazing he was. What will happen here, though, is because they played enough and Kirby should have won more games, that will reach, you know, pull back from Kirby's time, but or his in direct comparison to Nick Saban. I don't think I don't I don't think we're witnessing the greatest college football coach of all time at Georgia right now. That's not what it seems like to me. But uh, the only way to make that argument is to win more than Nick won at Alabama. Um, now, with that said, you know, Kirby's won two national championships while Nick was the head coach at Alabama. Alabama has won two national championships while Kirby was the head coach at Georgia. So it's not the same quite comparison. I mean, I think head-to-head, -head, there's no doubt that Nick, that, I mean, clearly. In, in, in 18, uh, 20, I don't know about 17. They were very close. But those two games, there's no question who the better team was, and it was Alabama. In 21, they split. In 23, Georgia was the better team and got upset. I mean, that's just all That's all it was to it. In 21, Georgia should not have lost the SEC championship game. But, you know, they did. And it didn't cost them a national championship. But, you know, so that, that year, I think you just kind of flush out. The other, you know, the couple, I think the one that's damaging is the 23. You know, 23 was a game Georgia should have won that game. I mean, they just should have. They were the better team. You know, they didn't play well. But they were the better team, and they should have won. When you're a better team, you should win. But, you know, Paul, this is what he does. He does like to needle some. But it is a, it is, it is not a, it is not a ridiculous criticism uh, of Kirby Smart to say he didn't beat Nick Saban as much as he should have. Um, to say he couldn't beat them, well, that's not true. I mean, we, we, we saw he could beat them. He beat them on the biggest stage. So that's a little bit ridiculous. But, it's, I mean, it's entertainment. This is what we do. I think moving forward, you know, to me, when we fast forward to middle, you know, middle, late September, late middle September, however you want to put it, you know, Georgia doesn't beat Alabama this time, then it won't just be about Nick Saban. It will be Kirby can't beat Alabama. Um, I don't ever buy the XYZ can't beat because I've always lived in, you know, it's just a moment in time. Where are we at in this? You know, like the Bills right now. They can't beat the Chiefs. Yeah, until they beat them. I mean, you know, they beat them in the regular season. Um, you know, I, I just, they're just not better than the Bill, um, than, than the Chiefs. I mean, that's the biggest thing to me right now um, is that they're not the better team. So we've got all of that. I don't really do that sort of thing. But there, there's going to be some real – Curtis, the Alabama that, that Georgia's going to see in September is not the one that was gussying up with Nick Saban in this offseason. And they were returning this, that, and the other. I mean, a lot of their really good players are gone. Isaiah Bond is gone. You know, Caleb Downs is gone. You've got, you know, coaches. You know, Nick Saban's gone. It, it's just, it's not the same Alabama. And that will add up. They're not going to be a bad team. But they're not going to be the same team as we, as, as I thought would it would enter into this the season. I don't know what will happen when we meet up in Dallas. It's completely ridiculous we're doing media days in Dallas, but you know, this is this is entertainment. This is a show, and that's what we do with Oklahoma and Texas, and that's fine. Whatever. I mean, I think it belongs in Atlanta, like you know we're really good events are and I know Dallas will do a great job don't get me wrong but like it shouldn't be in Nashville and it shouldn't be in wherever else they pick next you know New Orleans I mean why um, it's outgrown Birmingham it should never be back there again but but Nashville wasn't ready for media days but that's another discussion for another time Dallas will be um, well, I don't know what will happen when people pick that I mean, my guess is that they will still pick Alabama just sort of as, you know, involuntary reaction. See Alabama, pick Alabama. Uh, and, you know, with Jaden Daniels leaving LSU, but, you know, I don't I don't know who the one-two will be. Um, 
you would think LSU would make a lot of sense, but Texas, obviously, with all they have coming back, it will probably be Georgia and Texas. I don't think you should, uh, that there's pick to win it. Um, but, you know, we'll just see. I mean, like, there's no certainty that those two teams will be the two teams. You've got, as I mentioned, LSU, you've got Alabama, you've got Ole Miss. I mean, is Missouri going to be good enough? I don't know. But I did think what Paul's uh, critique was, um, was interesting and curious. And uh, I just wanted to say, you know, it's going to be a very different future without Nick in the, in the league. Um, I think he will probably wind up at Disney. Um, they've got an expanded role for him in the SEC. It could be, you know, talk about college football. It could talk very specifically about the SEC all day long on ABC. Um, he could, you know, fly to Bristol or Charlotte, wherever, and just kind of do his thing like that. Um, I think that would make a lot of sense. But we'll just see how it goes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.